Let's just cut to the chase. I know why you click the thumbnail. It's this right here. So let's find out. This user right here, Carlos Bravo, has this to say. He says, this is very, very bad. The game encourages the player to choose to be trans in order to get more dialogue options. Now, what are those dialogue options, you might ask? Well, here's Rook, and Rook says, take a long, hard look in, in the mirror, kid. It'll always show the face of a hero who can get it done. Whatever it is, I'm not sure. But here we go. So you see right here, just below that, it says establishes uh, transgender identity and unlocks new dialogue options in future conversations. And that's when you select the uh, I'm getting there, I guess, is what you're doing. Now you can go down here and here's a further expansion when you do choose to become trans. The, the dialogue, the initial dialogue from Rook doesn't change. You know, the same thing, face of a hero who can get it done, whatever it is. However, now your responses have shifted to my scars are badges of honor. Now you remember in the character creator, you can engage, uh, you have the toggle switch to turn on um, uh, top correction surgery, whatever, when they get their boobs cut off. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be, no, I do mean to be mean. It's ridiculous, it really is. If you have cancer, it's one thing, but and if you're dealing with something like that, um, uh, what is that? Uh, something mastia, it's a, about the about the, the the boobs, the hooters, if you will, being too big, if you will, and they're kind of like uh, warping the skeleton, uh, immense back pain, that kind of stuff. It's a bit of a joke, right, with your top heavy friends, but in reality, at a certain size, that becomes incredibly difficult to live your life, and so uh, yeah. That that's a reason to have that kind of surgery performed. But if it's too, you know, replace the identity that you uh, were born with. I I can't really get behind that. That's it's one thing to cross dress, okay? Like it, again, that's gone on for centuries. The Japanese do it with kabuki theater. That's perfectly fine, okay? Like that. I I don't in, I don't do it. I don't endorse it. But it, it's just a fact of life that hasn't caused that much trouble over the centuries. Let's put it that way. But when you start going into actually harming your body, and I'm sorry, corrective uh, surgery, corrective surgery, like when your nose can't, you can't breathe through your nose because a bone formed wrong because you bonked your face when you were a kid. And your parents didn't realize that it offset your nose because, you know, every toddler goes headfirst into a coffee table eventually. They're like hit coffee, ta coffee table seeking missiles, right? So these little kids... They get their nose a little bonked around and they, they cry. They have a horrible time. Parents make sure that they're not bleeding out of their nose so they don't think it's broke. But as you know, a baby's head is basically, you know, Play-Doh for a certain time. So after so many years, the child matures, the nose is, you know, malformed deep inside and there's a passage that's blocked. And, you know, maybe they have an allergy. So like a whole nostril is completely blocked over when it ordinarily would just be stuffed up, right? And that makes it hard to breathe and thus... They have to have some type of apparatus to help them breathe, right? So I fully understand corrective surgery around that. Cosmetic surgery is where I start to have a problem. I understand that there are facial scars you can end up with, body scars. I have a few myself, believe me. I have an assortment of things that keep me going that are not um, factory set, factory default, okay? I understand that part, okay? But when it comes to the cosmetic stuff of adding or removing... Um, healthy tissue that in no way interferes with your ability to move your arms, right? Imagine that you have uh, boobs that are so big that you can't reach things. That's, that's not like, that's, that's cosmetic surgery I can understand. I can understand that one. Imagine that you have like a, a, a nose, again, a nose that is just so robust that you can't see around it. It's difficult to navigate life when you have a, a you know, your bridge of your nose that's taking up 30% of the space that your eyes see through. Yeah, I understand that getting fixed, right? I get that. You have like one of those unsightly situations where like, you know, there's been a broken nose in your in your childhood, like I said, with that, and it ends up forming this really ungodly mountain range over your nose. You look like a Klingon from Star Trek. You know, I, I understand wanting to get that sawed off, you know, if it's not going to interfere with your ability to breathe. I understand you don't want to have that Klingon bump on your nose the rest of your life if it's not going to interfere, you know, with your ability to conduct your life. But when you go taking off body parts that are healthy, that is extremely dangerous. That is a very, very dangerous precedent to start making trending. 
And what I call this is the corporatization of the human experience. And moreover, the corporatization of mental illness. All right, I'll throw that. I'll pull the pin and throw the grenade right out there right now. I'll meet you down in the comment section. Okay, we'll talk it out, but this is a documented problem with people. And what you're doing is you're making money off of it now. You're making it trendy, right? You're making it cool. All right, I'll remind you of the Bebop character, right? That character in Cowboy Bebop, I forget his name at the moment, but he's the soldier that had the transition surgery forced on him. That's not a happy story. That's not a person discovering their identity. That's a horrific scientific experiment being forced upon an individual to only have it fail halfway through the process and thus paralyze that person's ability to belong to either side of that gender spectrum. Okay? That's not a character that you should be making cool, that people should be hashtagging with anything other than sympathy. All right? But look what happened in Cowboy Bebop, and here we are. My scars are badges of honor. These scars are sexy. Scars are lessons learned. Right? Now, again, you talk about your facial scars, but I'll note that that dialogue about the trans stuff has disappeared now. I wonder what these could be scars could be talking about. I wonder what lessons could be learned when you have chest scars. Hmm? But it feeds into the greater apparatus of the game because there's whole massive changes that are going on with this entire thing. So you may remember Dorian and uh, you may remember Isabella. Uh, they look a little different now. Um, have a look. So here's uh, Isabella in DA2. And, you know, she's uh, she's kind of rocking it, right? That's, that's all lady right there. That's all lady. We have her from Dragon Age Inquisition right here. Still... Still a whole lot of lady right there. Still a whole lot of lady. But uh, as you can see now in uh, Dragon Age, the Veil Guard, uh, it looks like somebody whapped her in the face with a hammer. Like, it's like her whole, like, from here to down just went wham backwards, you know? Ended up with an extraordinarily square jaw there. Like, that's like a Norelco commercial square jaw, right? You know? Selling razors with that jawline. And, uh, and, of course, her nose is completely different. She used to have an upturned nose there, an upturned more of a... For me, as I understand it, this is more of a French nose. I could be wrong, but to my knowledge, this is a French nose that she had in DA2. And now she has a Detroit nose in a DA Valgard. So there you go. Uh, up to you to decide if that's valid or not, but, uh, you know, uh, more like a San Francisco nose, right? Now, uh, Dorian, uh, he, looks, uh, he looks a little different now. Looks a little different now. In case you don't remember what he looks like, this is Dorian from before. And um, this is Dorian now. And you might notice that he looks just a, a tad bit different. There's something, I don't know, I just can't put my finger on it. I, I just, hmm, what could it be? Hmm. Well, anyway, you'll have to let me know down in the comments what's different. We'll have to play, uh, can you guess who, I guess, right? But, uh, things are a little screwy, too, when it comes to reporting about this game. As we found out over on Dual Shockers, that, uh, it's a gaming reporting site, it's not. I, at first, thought that this was one of those sites, you know, where you go and you occasionally get a gaming article, but most of the time it's stuff that's, you know... A little more adult, but apparently that's what somebody decided to call an honest-to-God news site, so... Oh well. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, Dual Shockers has a completely different meaning for me. But anyway, uh, I wonder why Dual Shockers removed and replaced uh, this from their uh, Dragon Age Veilguard review. Uh, it's a game that clearly has had a bit of sweet baby ink treatment in spots, and it comes to its... when, Especially when it comes to, rather its character backgrounds and storytelling. Now, here it is from the original article, right? You know, and the, you know, by giving old characters little cameo appearances, but unwilling to truly cater to the wants and needs of long-serving Dragon Age fans. And we hear this over and over again, the Dragon Age fans that have been there all along. I'm not one of them. Don't get me wrong. Do not. I'm not. Nope. The closest I've come to this game is much like Mass Effect, is just being on the couch while it's being played on this te television in the same room just watching it go by, okay? That's it, all right? I'm not 
not that guy. So, again, I hear that a lot of people were looking for Dreadwolf was going to be the next one, and then all of a sudden, Veilguard just showed up. So, you'll have to let me know down in the comments if that's how the order of events went, where Dreadwolf fits in this. If that's even the name of it, I could have that confused with the actual name. It could have been something else. And, again, I am reporting on this because it is alarming to me that we had Sweet Baby Ink in the guts of this, and guess what happened, right? And, again, now... Here's Dual Shockers taking out the mention of Sweet Baby Ink in the article. Isn't that beautiful? It gives you indigestion every time you mention them, right? You just feel all the gas build up inside it. It's got to find a way out. Thankfully, that went up instead of out. Or, uh, you know, the Shrek joke. But anyway, it seems like this is a new age for Dragon Age. And while it has its flaws, oh, it's very tiny flaws, it's one that has started with a bang, even though this is the end of the franchise or, you know, the end of this line anyway. But you may be wondering, why are all these man-faced women running around this game? Why is everybody talking about they, them, theirs, and everyone else's? Well, um, here is the director of the game. Uh, this is Corrine Bush. And uh, thanks to uh, Little King of Hado here, at Little King of Hado, this is Ryan, um, check it out. We've got some information about Corrine Bush, and we'll just move this over to another tab so we can see what's going on. So Bioware, exciting news, Dragon Age fans, join us on June 11th for the first official gameplay reveal of the Veilguard. Uh, in 2020, this is what Corrine looked like. In 21, this is what Corrine looked like. And here we have a semi-current photo of Corrine before Corrine locked down, or rather, after Corrine locked down her, uh, their, his, I'm not sure. This person lock down their profile. And so it says right here, uh, trans woman, she, her, trans flag, game director of Dragon Age and Dreadwolf, uh, queer-o-sexual gendermancer. <sighs> okay. So for those of you who aren't familiar with, like, mancies, all right, mancies, the various mancies in as far as the fantasy genre is concerned is sort of like... Uh, the element benders from Avatar The Last Airbender. And so a gender mancer would be someone that is constantly changing the, sta the state of their gender, altering it and specifically focused on that. Like a necromancer, right? You've heard that one before, the necromancer. So this is a gender... Oh, wow, those two things, huh? I didn't think about it like that. Anyway... This person says their opinions are of their own. Hashtag trans rights. Hashtag Black Lives Matter. It's really great when somebody that looks like that has that to say. You just know that it's coming from a place of true honesty, right? A place of true honesty. But there's more. There's more. So uh, this is part of Corrine's uh, developer profile. And so what it says here is uh, we're just going to you know, read along. We'll have to slide over a little bit here because it doesn't quite fit in the window. Got to love it. So anyway, it says... And the idea of being who you want to be carries a particularly special meaning for Corrine. Quote, as a queer trans woman, she says, I have a perspective on the games that not everyone has. Dragon Age has long been a place where LGBTQIA+, whew, I forgot the two SS, the two Qs and the two As. Man. Exclusivity all over the place these days. Folks can see people like themselves represented respectfully. Respectfully. It's inherently very queer, and it's such a rare thing for marginalized communities to have representation where we feel proud and powerful in how we are depicted. So it's so deeply meaningful for so many people. I often get emotional when I think about what it would have meant for a younger version of myself to see someone like her in a game as a hero, no less. I hope we can be a safe place for our queer players to know they are not alone, that they are brilliant and worthy, that they are not only welcome, but celebrated. Wow. How about that? A place where trans people are celebrated. Wow, that's not, that's, that doesn't exist anywhere on Earth, right? Nowhere on Earth. There wasn't one of those in Barbie. Yeah, 
that's kind of it's kind of weird, right? There's a bunch of cans, and then there's a trans Barbie, and it's like, how'd that happen? Anyway, let's get down here to this. And so, Corrine, again, there's a little bit more uh, expansion on this. So, uh, this is uh, from 2022 is what it looks like. And uh, the game director here, this is um, Corrine in her own words saying, uh, being a game director is about being a steward for the vision of what we as a team have defined. It's a role where I have a high level view of everything as it's coming together and can steer the project as it does. But ultimately, it's about empowering people to work together to create cohesive exper a cohesive experience for the player. Yeah, we're unburdened by the past here. Prepare to begin to commence to start to, you know. <laughs> it's one of those situations where this, that, that's nothing. That's, I think ChatGPT could have come up with probably something a little more direct than that. My gosh. But uh, that's what you're dealing with, with who's running the, uh, the, the game here that incentivizes players to, you know, these scars are sexy. Scars are lesson learn lessons learned. Oh, wow. How about that? Very smart. Which is also very smart. NVIDIA out here uh, giving away Dragon Age the Veilguard for free if you get GeForce for six months. So that's, that's a good sign. They did that with Unknown 9, and that, that helped them get like a little over 200 players. But uh, over here at, uh, at Manga Lawyer, Learning the Law, we use this uh, account over here on Twitter quite a bit to bring information to your attention, and they're very, very helpful. So feel free to uh, follow them over on X, and uh, they're at Manga Lawyer. Very helpful account. And uh, this user says, Happy Easter Gaming to East Happy Eastern Gaming female character, which is Eve, you see right here, and an angry Western female character to Ash from the Dragon Age Veilguard. And I think that's a pretty apt comparison to what's going on. And so I have to ask you, would you be more interested in picking up a new skin from the Descendant? From the first Descendant, maybe? Uh, we've got uh, the Twisted Worship SE. And don't worry, not an actual nun. It's wearing entirely different iconography, so you're all set. Not, not an actual nun, so you're all set. But uh, check it out. Ask yourself, are you really more interested in uh, dealing with this character uh, right here, or are you more interested in this character right there? I think the choice is pretty obvious, but I, you know, I'm a man of culture. You, you may be a person of other cultures, I guess. But anyway, guys, you'll have to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, good luck out there.